Hey there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I created these farm fields in my F4 render. Um, they wouldn't hold up to close examination or you know close renders, uh, but as a as a background image, I think they work pretty well. Uh, they're fairly low poly, and they don't really add too much complexity to the scene. Uh, this is our project file. I have a large valley that I created using the ANT uh, add-on for terrains. You can see it's nearly 100 square kilometers. I like to render, I like to make all my scenes full size. I think it makes things easier uh, between projects because everything always matches up scale-wise. In the, um, down here, I've got some houses. And I also like to put in scale items into my scenes while I'm working on them so I have an idea of how big to make other things. You know, if you have something that's a familiar size, it's easy to make sure you don't make things too big or too small. All right, so let's put our field, our crop, or our farm, like right here. That's just going to start off as a mesh, create a plane, and I'm going to scale it up. And we'll put it here-ish. And we will subdivide it. Edit mode will subdivide it. That's good. All right, and I'm going to assign a texture to it it's, that I've already have. It's called Farm Dirt, and I'll show you that later. And the next thing we want to do is we want to just smush this down using a shrink wrap, and we're going to push it right down on top of the uh, terrain there. All right, so it just snuggles down there, and that's good for now. But we'll reapply this in a minute. Anyway, so let's hide the terrain for a second. And we're just going to look at our, this is this is going to be our farm fields. Next thing we want to do in edit mode, if we go to proportional editing, what I want to do is I just want to kind of move things around, kind of get these square lines, not square anymore. Maybe rotate some of them. We're just trying to add some randomness here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use these these lines to create the edges of our fields. All right, that's good enough for now. And the next thing I want to do is we're going to cut this up into little pieces and use those various pieces as different crops. So I'm just going to kind of select bits here. And we're going to make like a jigsaw puzzle out of this. And I'm going to pause the video while I do this. You don't have to watch me do this. All right, so I've selected a bunch of pieces here. And I'm going to hit P to separate the selections so that they're a separate piece. And I'm going to keep doing that a couple times until I've got like three or four or five sets of these. So I'm going to pause it again. All right, so I'm finished selecting all the various faces. And I think you can see what I've done here is I've created a patchwork of pieces that kind of fit together like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. The next bit here is to create a little border around each of them. So I'm going to select everything, go into face mode, hit I to inset and just shrink it in a little bit. Hit control I to select the outer edge and then I'm going to delete those faces. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do that for the rest of these as well. All right, so that's done. So you can see what I've done is I've kind of like created little roads or spaces between what will be the fields. All right, the next thing to do is add a particle system to these various patches to, to simulate the, the plant growth on them. Now I have my quote unquote crops, my plants, as a collection here. And this is all they are. They're just a bunch of cubes that have been oops, sorry about that. Cubes that have been stretched up tall and gotten a little pointy. As a shader, they're really simple. They just have a principle on them, roughness set to one, and a um, fairly desaturated color. Right? You want the colors not to be super saturated or else it's gonna look a little weird. So desaturated colors, and each one of these has a has a slightly different color. So we got a sage and a dark green and tan, light tan, another sage, slightly different, little brown. So these are going to create the uh, 
the plants in our fields. So we just sit, select one of these, for example, go over to particle settings, I'm going to create a new one, and I just happen to have some here. So select this crop one here, and let me isolate that, and we'll zoom in here. All right, you can see it's just a bunch of spiky stuff there. And the particle setting is just hair, advanced, you know, fairly big number. Um, important to use faces when you use random. I guess you could use jitter if you want them to be a little bit more lined up. Uh, that might be a little better actually for a field. Fields tend to be plowed like that. So I'll go with jitter. You definitely want to have some rotation um, set object Y, that'll get the plants to stand up, otherwise they'll lay on their side. Under render, we're selecting an object. In this case, we're selecting the crop five object, which is that. And we've got some scale and some randomness on the scale to make them, not so all the plants aren't exactly the same size. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply um, the particle systems to most of the other pieces of crop here, hold on. All right, so I've applied particle systems to each of these these guys, except for one. One of them I don't have a particle system on. That'll just be like dirt fields. One thing I forgot to do beforehand was to do a UV unwrap. So I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to select everything, and I'm just going to project, project from view so we have some UVs to work with. All right, um, let's look at the one that doesn't have the dirt. Or doesn't have the plants on it. There we go. This one. So I want to show you the the, uh, the dirt shader. All right. So for the base dirt, I have this shader. Uh, most of it is, you know, the dirt color itself just comes from a texture uh, of dirt. If you haven't seen Andrew Price's uh, Polygon Uber Mapping Node videos, uh, it's a very helpful tool. It's a free download. I'll put a link for it in the description. It allows you to mix uh, tiles together without creating, or it, it hides uh, repeating patterns by um, creating a mosaic and then rotating them so that the edges of each texture blur together. A uh, very helpful tool for um, eliminating repeating patterns. The um, plow lines, so if I go back and we can render one of these things, you can see that there are plow lines on here. Maybe some of them are too small. These are created with this function here. So this random per island drives these lines in different directions per each island. And then this is going to be the scale of them, make them bigger or smaller. Um, gives them variety. So if you have like a open field that hasn't been planted yet, you'll see the, the furrows, the plow lines. And then it just runs through a wave texture with bands. And then I use that output to mix with the color to make the dark and also feed that into a bump map so there's a little bit of a bump associated with it. All right, so that's the uh, actual dirt. And if we go back and we unhide everything, and maybe we'll take a render of this with all the uh, particle systems turned on. All right, so the render finished, and this is what we've got so far. Now, this is kind of a quick and dirty exercise. A uh, little more time spent on the on the mosaic of these, and you know the application of the uh, particle system is a better result. But I think you get the idea here. We've got you know a bunch of variety of plants, some roads, um, some dirt fields with furrows in them, and you know when you mix it in with with trees and better lighting and stuff, I think it does a pretty good job of making a convincing farmland. Um, that's about it for the uh, project. I hope it was helpful. If you liked it, thumbs up. Um, thank you for watching.